Yo, what is good, Dev guys? It's your boy K. Yes, sir. I'm back with another video. Look, man, we're gonna talk about it. We're gonna go ahead and have that conversation. All right. So let's just get into it. So, how did I get caught with 50 pounds of marijuana at the airport? Well, I'm gonna start from the beginning. All right. So 2018, like June or July, I can't remember exact date. I'm out of the military. Um, I get a, a separation. Uh, it's an honorable separation. I didn't do anything bad or anything. Um, but I'm transitioning to civilian life. And, you know, uh, well, you in the military, you getting a pretty good check. I cannot lie. I was a E4, uh, not a high rank, but my rank was high enough to get me a, a good check to, to live off of and to like flourish off of. So transitioning to civilian life where I'm no longer getting that money, uh, I was kind of hurting for cash. You know what I'm saying? So I got presented with an opportunity to make money rapidly. You know what I'm saying? By rapid, I mean like 20K a week. You know what I'm saying? Shit, I missed it. <laughs> Can you hear it in my voice? I missed it. Yeah, so I got that opportunity and it was like, uh, not a decision that I had to take time to make. You know what I'm saying? As soon as I got that opportunity, as soon as it was presented to me, I said, shit, I'm down for that. What's up? Tell me what I need to do to make money like that. Cause I was hurting, you know what I'm saying? I was getting money at the time. Like I was in college getting paid, but going from military life to college life was kind of redundant to me. It was like, I'm with all these fucking kids and shit. I'm, in class with high school kids that don't know shit about life and it's it's uh it's it's it turns your stomach a little bit uh so yeah i, I took that opportunity as fast as i could i ain't gonna lie to y'all and the job was to just fly from where i'm at to a place in california and pick up some pounds bring them back in my carry-on bags and not my carry-on but my uh my whatever bags that you weigh and they put them in the fucking bottom of the plane, those bags. And I bring them back over here and distribute the pounds out to everyone who paid for them. And there was other opportunities over there in California because, you know, this shit is not illegal there. So, like, they had jobs for trimming, like, taking the weed and trimming it into the buzz that you see when you when you smoke it. Uh, that Someone has to manually trim that to look like that. You can get paid a hundred a pound to trim. I was doing that. You get paid like 50, 75 a pound to, to pack it into a bag and seal it. I was doing that. So I was making extra money on top of the money that I was already getting paid to travel back and forth. So the money was good. I ain't gonna lie. The money was good. I took it. I invested it into myself. I, I started buying out clubs to throw my own shows since motherfuckers wanted to charge me $200 to get on a show and it's fucking $400 to rent the club out for an entire night. And I was getting finesse in Austin. So I had to really make some, I had to make some plays for myself. So I was taking that money and trying to just invest it and make that money grow for me um so it's not like i was just getting the money and buying jewelry and uh buying fucking you know bottles and shit and fucking hoes and throwing money at the club and shit no i was actually i was taking the money and trying to make myself what i thought my life should be like you get what i'm saying um yeah so i was doing that for you know for a good little time i was doing that for a good little time uh i made enough money to 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 try and by Blueface to come and perform for me. I'll tell you the story about how that nigga finessed me at another time. Uh, but yeah, I made some money to to uh, to do some some solid things. But we're talking about how I got caught, man. So basically, the system I was working under wasn't as organized as I would have wanted it to be. You know, I'm coming from the military. I'm used to when you work in an organization, it's organized somewhat. The military is somewhat organized, even though it's, it's trash at points and times. But this was even worse. Like, there was no organization. There was no communication. Um, and it's because we're doing illegal things. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you don't want to seem like a narc asking a million questions about this and how we doing that and how we traveling like this and why we doing this and instead of that. Like, motherfuckers ain't trying to hear all these questions. And... I could have done better by being who I am, which is I'm a 
I'm a person that asks questions. That's why I didn't do so well in the military. Like, I ask questions, like, why? Like, how are we, why are y'all making us do this? Like, how do y'all expect us to do this? Like, and I, that's the kind of person I am. And I don't know, I just, the money blinded me, all right? I was blinded by the money. All right, so I changed who I would. The money changed me. The money changed me. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't ask the questions that I would have usually asked. Like, what's the route? What's, you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what am I supposed to do? What's the per perfect way to get this? What's the traveling times? You know what I'm saying? Like, things like that. I could have still been doing the shit to this day. Uh, y'all probably would have seen me famous somewhere if, if I would have asked those questions. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Like, I probably would have been one of the biggest artists in the world right now. Off the drug, buddy. You dig what I'm saying? No cap. Uh, but yeah, the things weren't planned out for me. My cards weren't planned out for me like that. Uh, I, I'm glad that I that I'm not, because you know I would have been dealing with a lot of snaky shit, a lot of looking over my shoulder. Right now, I feel safe. I'm making good money. Um, I'm trying to build up a nice YouTube platform. Uh, I love game dev. I love it. Like, but I hate it. But the only way you can hate something is if if you love it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I, I don't know how to explain that. Love and hate is the same energy. It just one has a, a different tone to it. But uh, yeah, man. So I got caught because of unorganization. So the night, the night before I flew out, I I had just flew back. You know what I'm saying? I had just flew back. So. I got another opportunity, like, I got a back-to-back -back job to come back out, and I was like, shit, uh, I might as well, and I went out with someone else this time so that we can move more, and, uh, man, it was just a lot of signs, like, hindsight is really 2020. There's a lot of signs to tell me to, to, to think and to ask questions, to do something, ch change something, because something feels weird, you know what I'm saying? It's like, you get that feeling in your stomach, like, something is weird tonight, but the night before I flew out, I had just got back and they called me back. And I was like, shit, I was supposed to do something with my wife. We were supposed to do something. And I told her, shit, babe, I got another opportunity to go make another 5K. So I'm going to do that. Uh, and I don't think that that's greed. That's not greed. That's me thinking about what $5,000 is going to do to my future and set me up. Because I was, you know what I'm saying? I, I was trying to get to a certain point in my life. And this is the, I'm thinking like, this is the things that I need to do to get to that point. You know what I'm saying? Like in my mind, I'm not thinking greed. I'm thinking this is the steps I need to take to get where I want to be. It's not really greed in my mind. Uh, other people like you might see that as greed, but I had no, like there was no greed in my mind. Like, unfortunately money is something that I need to get where I want to be in life. That's how I think about money. It's not but like, I want money. I need money. It's like, I need all the money. You know, it's like I need money so I can get where I want in my life so I can make sure the people in my life are comfortable, make sure my loved ones are fed, you know, things like that. Uh, but yeah, so I got I, I flew back out the next the next day and I got there. You know, I'm trimming. I'm I'm helping out. I'm making extra money on the side. Shit, we playing 2K for money. It's it's going down. You know what I'm saying? We we doing all kinds of shit to make money up in there. You know what I'm saying? Shooting dice, playing 2K for money, playing cards for money, playing horse for money. It's just a lot of money flowing around. You dig what I'm saying? Yes, sir. You know, like, that's it. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, but uh, that day, uh, I wasn't by myself. One of my other guys came with me and we, you know what I'm saying? We was chilling. We was having a good time, man. And we got everything, everything packed up by that night. He, he flew out first. He flew out like evening time. Like it was nighttime probably in here where I'm at, but it was evening time over there, like five, four, four, five, six in that area. And, uh, so we let him go first. We let him, I want him to land before I even got there. And it wasn't like he was a test dummy or nothing like that. It's just like. You want to spread things out. We was trying to be smart, even though we weren't being smart. Um, so he went first, and then my boy got a call in California, and he started panicking. He's like, oh, my God, somebody's badge got caught. Like, he said that. Like, he literally said that somebody somebody got caught. And um, it was actually none of us that got caught. It was somewhere else, like in San Antonio. Some people got caught in San Antonio. And... 
he was like, ah, oh, okay. He was relieved, right? And like he was really like, I don't know, his energy was just weird. I wasn't paying attention to it though. I was just trying to get my shit and go. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, that's just how I was thinking about it. I was supposed to leave at a window between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m., right? And if I would have left at that time, I would still be doing this today. I would still be doing that shit today. The window between 12 a.m. and 3 a.m. is just a, a, a very clean window. And I'm not trying to, like, fuck up the game for everybody else. Like, you know, I don't know if the... If y'all like this video enough, maybe the feds will watch this video. So give me some likes. Fuck it. I don't care. I don't care. I'm doing something different now. So, you know what I'm saying? Like and subscribe. I, I, I'm, I'm shamefully plugging that in in the middle of this video. Jesus Christ. Who am I? Who have I become? But, um, yeah, so the window between 12 a.m. and really 6 a.m. is a clean window because you got to think that not that many people are at the airport. So there's no need for that much security. My dumbass went in between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. That's my that's when I took my flight window. I landed at 12 p.m. Literally the most busiest time at the airport. I like hindsight. I'm like, you were a dumb motherfucker. Why would you land at an airport with that much weed? At 12 o'clock. What the, What was I thinking? I wasn't thinking. I was blinded by the money. The money changed me. I was blinded. All right. That's just what happened. That's a stoop. That's one of the stupid things. And I was, but the thing is, I was trying to leave earlier than that. I was trying to leave, but the, I'm at someone else's mercy. That And that's the shittiest part about this whole system is that even though I was my own man making my own money, I was at someone else's mercy. Like, when I was in Cali, the guy that I'm rolling with, the boss, this motherfucker want to go gamble. He want to go, he want to go to a, uh, he want to go out to eat. You know what I'm saying? Like he want to go get breakfast at some place. He want to go to to the fucking casino, and it's like, bro, I gotta go, bro, I gotta go. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm trying to get the fuck up out of here. And so by the time I left, it was like eight, nine o'clock over there. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's just I don't know, man. Like, so if it's eight nine over at actually, I didn't. I don't think I landed at twelve. I got look at my. I got look at the time that I got caught. I, I think it was maybe around three or four my time Central Time. So I left over there. Like I think I left over there around ten, like in a clean window, like. Before it got too busy, type shit uh, from California. So I can't be. I, I was like, it is like three years ago, almost three years ago. So I I don't remember the times exactly. I'm not capping. This shit is like documented. Um, but yeah, I, I left over there sometime like midday type shit. And I got over here at a very busy time in the airport. Like it it was crazy. Like when I landed, it was the most eerie shit I ever felt in my life, bro. I landed, I got off the plane, I said bye to the flight attendants and shit. I'm feeling like a rich nigga. You dig what I said? So uh I yeah, I walked down to to where you're supposed to go get your bags, and there was a delay on our bags. Everybody else, like flights that landed after us was already getting their bags, and I was kind of weirded out. I wasn't thinking that something was going wrong because, you know, I've done this a few times. Like I, I wasn't thinking that something was going wrong. But shit was going wrong. They was checking bags, and I seen the footage when I when I was at my trial. They showed the footage of the dog checking the bags and realizing my bag had weed in it. I was pissed. I was like, God damn! So this whole time I was sitting at the airport, they was checking my bags. I could have like, if I would have known anything, I would have just left them bitches there and dip, bro. I would just said, Fuck it, I'll take this loss. Fuck it, I'd rather take this loss than pay for you know trial and shit like that. Um, but. I, I didn't know anything was happening. I was just, you know, I'm on my phone texting. I'm supposed to be getting a ride. My girl's at work, so my my boy came to pick me up, and uh, so yeah, they they delayed our bags, and then what they did is that they put all our bags separate from everybody else, and I didn't understand that because everybody 
like everybody up for all the other flights, all their bags was dropping at the same spot. And like it was, you, everybody was just checking their bags and grabbing them and leaving. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a Florida fight flight. It was a, it was a, uh, it was a flight from up East, like up Northeast that came. Uh, and our flight was the only flight singled out in the one little baggage, uh, t- t- whatever that thing is, the baggage revolver thing. Uh, so I'm waiting on my bags and they intentionally, this is crazy. They intentionally put my bags behind everybody else's bags so that everybody would clear out of the fucking airport before I got my bags. Like the airport was damn near empty by the time I got my bags. My bags finally came down and I grabbed them and I'm walking. I got my AirPods in. I'm listening to music. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm vibing. I'm like, I made it. I touched down. I'm good. I fucking start walking outside. I look to my left. It's a fucking cop with a dog to my left. I look to my right. It's another fucking cop with a dog to my right. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I just keep my composure, right? I say that fuck in my brain. That fuck is in my, deep in my brain. Nobody's seen that on my face. I just look to my left and right. I was like, oh, shit. And I walked. And I kept walking. I hit the crosswalk. To, to, to go to like the park area where you can like you can buy a car like you can like put money into a car and and take it out I like my plan had instantly changed as soon as I seen that dog and that fucking and those cops um so I walk I'm walking towards the the car park and I get to the elevator bro and I'm damn near about to get on the elevator and some cop is like hey hey Gregory Addison I'm like, oh shit! I tried to get to the elevator. They <laughs> grabbed me on my shoulders, like, uh, uh-uh, uh, uh. Hey, he whispered in my ear, like, hey, let's not make this a big deal, man. Just come with us. Just come with us. I said, what? I try to play it off. Why? What did I do? <laughs> Knowing damn well I'm guilty. <laughs> I was guilty. But yeah, uh, I try to play it off. I try to ask why. Like, I try to get people around me to be like, hey, man, this is uh, police brutality or something. You know what I'm saying? I try to get people to help me. Motherfuckers didn't give a fuck about me. They was <laughs> they was tired from their flight. They were trying to go home. So I walked with the police, man, and I tried to do some smooth shit, bro. I tried to, hey, Siri, because I, I got my AirPods in. I'm t- I, they got my hands behind my back. Like, but I'm not actually, no, no, I'm, I'm lying. I'm lying. I got my hands on my bags. And they like walking with me, hand on my shoulder type shit. And I, I, my hands aren't free because I got to carry my bags. And I'm like, hey, Siri. And Siri, dumb ass wasn't listening, bro. Like right now, Siri probably listening to my ass right now. Yeah. Oh, she is probably listening to me because that fucking my phone is what's recording this. But I, I said that. And this bitch didn't listen, bro. I was pissed. I think she knew I was getting arrested. And, uh. I, 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 hit, I hit her again, and the, the officer was like, hey, man, what you doing? They put me on the ground, threw me on the ground, started cuffing me, and they made it a big-ass deal in front of everybody, bro. I got embarrassed like a motherfucker. And uh, they they grabbed my bags. One dude lifted me up like I was a piece of paper. He grabbed me by my cuffs and my, my pants and lifted me up off the ground. And I'm like, uh, I was trying to call my boy to tell him, hey, bro, I, I'm arrested. I'm getting arrested. Just leave out this motherfucker. And they they tried to, you know what I'm saying? They was like, who, who's coming to pick you up? Who's coming to pick you up? What kind of car are they in? And I was like, I can't I can't tell them what kind of car my boy coming in because, you know, they'll get him too. And he'll have to go down with me type shit for just being a, the, the guy that's coming to pick me up. So I told them that he was driving a black Nissan Altima. He's a Hispanic dude driving a black Nissan Altima. I completely lied. I had to lie. Like, I'm not about to let this guy go down with me. And I don't know if he noticed, but I, I pretty much, I pretty much my composure kept a lot of people safe. Like, I didn't talk about nobody. Like, there was people in my city talking about I snitched, and that's how I got out because they knew how much weed I had on me. They figured I should have been in the feds or some shit. But they figured I snitched to get out or some shit like that. I was like, hell no, nah, bro. The only person I snitched on was myself. Like, I told them it was me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, I, t- I told I told them that my dude was driving a black Nissan Altima, and he was Hispanic. So they was out there looking for the wrong nigga. Uh, my dude was dark, black, dark, black, darkness. 
and uh, he was driving a white car at that time. And uh, the funny shit is that if I would have gotten into the car, they probably would have pulled both of us over. And I think that's what they wanted because the, the way that they were set up, that they had those two dogs and those two police officers watching the car traffic. They already knew about me. They already knew what I looked like because, you know, when you fly, you got to give them your ID. You got to give them, you know, your government name. So when they found my badge, they found my ID. And they know what I look like. So they were looking for me. And um, but they played it off cool. Like they were all positioned in the place to catch me and the person that was picking me up because I they probably thought they were going to catch a bigger fish. Uh, so, yeah, they had the, t- the two police officers and the dogs posted up. And then right at the crosswalk, they had some undercover cop that was acting like a taxi driver. I don't know how they set this shit up so quick. They had an undercover cop setting up like a taxi driver at the crosswalk so that if I was trying to take a taxi, I was finna get in the car with a cop. And it, like that cop, that car was literally waiting for me to make a decision to, to take a taxi. So they had that set up. And then they last ditch effort was the dude that ran to catch me at the carport. So like they had all their bases covered. Like they they set up a sting instantly. Where the fuck is this police work when Tupac died? When Biggie got shot? You know what I'm saying? Where was this shit at when the motherfucker was getting killed? They tripping over weed. I ain't mad, but I'm just saying. You know what I'm saying? That was some good police work. You know what I'm saying? Like I was, we was only waiting for our badge for about 20, 35 minutes. You know what I'm saying? So they set that shit up in 20 minutes, bro. Cause like it took time to, to, to go through all the bags and smell them for weed. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of flight. That's a lot of people on that flight. So they set that shit up in 20 minutes, bro. That shit is crazy. Uh, that's, that's blowing my mind to be honest with you. But, uh, yeah. So, after I get detained and shit, they start asking me questions. They start trying to poke me for information. Ask me if I had weed in my bag. I told them, yeah. Like, I'm not going to lie to y'all. Y'all already know. Y'all already know what I got in my bag, bro. That's the reason y'all stopped me. So I'm not about to sit here and lie to y'all and let y'all put more pressure on me. Type, talking, You know, so trying to pressure me into telling on somebody. So I just told them it was me. This shit is mine. You know, I, like I wasn't. I wasn't trying to lie or anything like that. That's not in my nature. Like I'm, I have a hard time lying. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, what what happened after that? There was some, there was something else I wanted to say. Uh, something funny, but I, I don't know, man. I was in jail for a few days. I didn't spend that much time in jail. They put me in a hole, one of them holes where you can't come out. Like when I, I went to jail before. But, like, I had a job inside the jail. Like, I was washing dishes. I was setting up the food. Like, I had a food job in there. So it was like, I, I got to get out of my cell. This time, they just had me in the cell for, I was in there for a little less than four days. So I was in that room for four days, damn near. I was going kind of crazy. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, man, shit. Oh, this is what I want to say. The biggest reason they had all that defense, right? The week before I flew out, there was a bomb scare at the airport, bro. Like, I didn't know this. And I wasn't researching. <laughs> Why wasn't I paying attention to shit like that? There was a bomb scare at the airport I was using. And they had up security the, the week the, that week that I was flying in. But the thing is, I didn't get caught the night before because I came in at night when it was uh, 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 less people at the airport and there was a shift change. So those things, those little details are details that I would have made sure my people, because this is, you know what I'm saying? It's a job, but there ain't no fucking orientation for it. Like I'm not getting brought on and there's no computer-based learning for me to sit at a computer and be like, okay, this is the route you take. And then you need to come at this time or between these two times you need to come at these two times. No, there was none of that shit, bro. Like, you get this job, motherfuckers say, all right, we need you to fly out today. And you on a flight, you pay for the flight, you get your money when you get back. Like, it, you taking all the risk, basically. And that's why you get paid so much because you put the upfront money to take the flight, you pay for the flight back, and you get paid once you land and deliver. You don't get paid in California. That would have been nice to get the money in California. That would have been great. But 
uh, that would also cause a lot of issues. But yeah, so there was a bomb scare, bro. And that's the biggest reason why I got caught because de- 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 this airport defense was on Steelers. You know what I'm saying? Like Steelers defense at the airport, bro. Like it was crazy. Troy Palomalu was, you know what I'm saying, guarding the bags. They had, I don't even know no other players' names. I'm not really a big football guy, but I just know the Steelers had a good defense at one point in time. Uh, yeah, they they had the defense lined up. You know what I'm saying? The defensive line was strong. I was the quarterback because I had them motherfucking quarter pound. I mean, yeah, I said that. No, I'm joking. Uh, but yeah, but yeah, man, it was uh, it was crazy, man. I've been on probation for the last two years. I get off probation in November. Uh, it's been a journey. Uh, COVID really helped out my probation. I'm not going to lie to y'all. It made it a little bit easier. Uh, since we couldn't physically meet in person, I got phone call visits a lot earlier than I should have. Like my whole probation time was basically on the phone and, uh, I didn't get drug tested, even though I, I really, I didn't do any drugs. So, uh, that, that wouldn't have mattered really. But, uh, in the beginning I was doing drugs like the f- first few months. I was doing drugs, and but I was passing my drug test. I was taking some stems and shit, but um, hopefully they can't dock me on that now. I'm saying it. Uh, fuck it. Uh, I, I'm free, to be honest with you. Like I'm drug-free. I'm free of that life. I'm completely transferred over to, uh, to a nerd. Uh, so, yeah, man. Um, that's how I got caught. Like I got caught because of lack of organization. All the things that I'm, I've been improving on in my life now is the reason I got caught. Lack of organization, lack of communication, and lack of just just being a, a person that asks questions, like let, and, and getting blinded by getting blinded by the money. Uh, that that also got in the way. Uh, so yeah, that's all I really got for y'all, man. That's the story on that. I I feel like there's more. I feel like I might have left some good details out, but let me know if you like this video. If you want more videos like this, I still got the blue face story to tell y'all. Uh, I know this is not game dev oriented, but this is my life and my life is game dev. And the decisions that I've made and the journey that I've been on in my life has brought me to this place. So whatever stories I tell y'all, it, it literally has brought me to this point in time where I am a full time game dev, full-time student, uh, full-time trying to be a teacher on YouTube and Udemy type shit. So yeah. That, so whether you believe this is game dev or not, that's, that's on you. I don't really care. But, uh, yeah, if you like videos like this and you want to see more shit like this on my channel, go ahead, leave a like, go ahead, subscribe. You dig what I'm saying? Hit the bell icon for your boy. Uh, so you can get some notifications. I will be uploading more videos that are game dev oriented. I actually have a few of them recorded. I'm looking at them right now. Uh, so if you guys are ready for that, you know what I'm saying? Go ahead and just, you know, sit and wait. Be, be patient with your boy. Uh, school is really burning the fuck out of me right now. I, I got school four days a week, uh, three days off. So I try to fit things like this in the gaps where I'm not working. Like, I got to do homework right after this. Japanese homework, by the way. Yes, sir, I have taken Japanese. Uh, Ohio gozaimasu. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I'm playing. That's, that's how you say good morning. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys, man. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.